Hi, Joy Serb from Paper Finesse, guest designing for Cut at Home. Today we're going to be looking at making a card using lots and lots of dies, predominantly spellbinders. I'm going to be making a image of this deer. It's a Hero Arts stamp. It's a multi-layer and it comes with this little card for layout. And I'm going to be using four different ink colors. This is the first layer. You lay the stamp face down on the card. And I'm going to condition it by using Versamark because it's the first time I'm using this stamp. And then I dab it off just a little bit. Now I will come in with my first ink, which is Memento Sand. This is the lightest color. And I press it and hold it for a little bit to give the ink time to transfer to the paper. I use the back of my cardstock. The second one, I'm lining up the tail. I can see through it pretty well. And then I'm trying to line up the nose. And I pick it up with my positioner. And I come in with my second color. I believe this is the toffee, memento toffee. The third layer is the bulk of the stamp. Actually, what happened here is I had to re-stamp it because I didn't have step three and four video. So seeing I was doing that, I decided to make this one a buck. The project actually uses it without the antlers, which is a doe. So I'm going to be using the same ink we used for step two. I'm off just a little bit here on the antlers. Doesn't quite reach the head. Now I'm going to position the body for step three. Again, I'm lining up the tail. I'm looking at the bottom of his feet and the nose. And when I get it where it looks good, I'll close the lid to pick it up. I'm stamping with my third color which is Gina K. Warm Cocoa. And I'm using the dark chocolate for step four. This is step three, I'm sorry. Now step four, the dark chocolate is almost black. And I'm putting it in position. This one is much harder to tell if it's lined up correctly. So I'm putting it in place. And I'll show you in a minute how I actually test it. And then I'm going to put the face. This has got an outline for the ear and the nose and the eyes. I apologize for some of the little background noises. My granddaughter got up from her nap before I finished the voiceover. Now I'm picking up the face and the legs. This is a piece of acetate and I'm going to lay the acetate over it. And I'm going to stamp on it so I can see if it's positioned where I want it to be. Even though I did this, the ear is still a little bit off, but it'll be fine. I was paying more attention to the legs. So I'll look at it and it looks like I've got it pretty good. So I'll take out my acetate and 
re-stamp it two times. Now I'm going to try and fix those antlers. And as you're going to see, I probably should have left it alone. I didn't have enough control of the Fantastics here. And my line was a little too thick. When I realize I'm not doing it any favors, I quit. Remember all those little pieces in this stamp set? It's got some holly and some leaves. I'm going to end up using a couple of those to disguise it. I'm going to use the memento red for the berries. That's the little leaf. Using the Gina K asparagus for that. And this is a little clarity stamping tool that I just got for little things like this. I thought using the lid of my positioner might be a pain with something so tiny. So I'm stamping on two sets of these holly leaves. They're not perfect, but I can go and fix them. Then I'm going to attempt those berries. These stamps are so dang tiny. I'm coloring it. It doesn't give a good impression. Not its fault. It's me. But these stamping things are pretty cool because they're very lightweight. And it's got that little handle on it to hold it with. So I fill in the berries by hand. And I'm going to end up filling the leaves in a little bit with the green memento marker. I'm putting, I was thinking of putting a third leaf in to change my mind. I don't know how much you can see here. My leaf had a little goofy there where it just didn't stamp perfectly. So I'm going in on both sets of leaves and just redrawing them a little bit. And my buck is starting to look a little feminine. Nah, my buck's looking festive. That's what he is. He's festive. And here he is. This is a Spellbinders new dye. It's a Nest Abilities and it's called Lily. It's an accent. It's actually Water Lily's Decorative Accents. These are the pieces to it. These aren't the colors I'm using. These are just a sample. I want to show you what, what I'll cut out. I'll be using the frame, and I cut it out of a heavyweight green paper. And then I use the A2 Matting Basics to cut out the center. This is an old watercolor piece I got out of my stash that I did on a cruise. And they had the cheapest, awfulest paint. But I saved it. And this is the Zix holiday dyes from Tim Holtz and for one of them it's green on one side and it's a um, designer paper scrap the other one is out of gold gold shimmer sheet and then just green so I cut three pieces of foliage there of the holiday greens I'm just positioning it to get an idea where I need to glue everything down and here I'm looking at the bottom of the frame so I know how low to put my branches 
and decide I need to cut off the end of this one. I don't really want to see the stalk through. Yes, I am. I am putting the branches where it will show through the frame, which is all right. I just don't want the stalk to show. The green doesn't matter, seeing the deer will be in the center. And there's my dough. The reason I did a dough the first time was because I didn't want to hand cut the antlers. And this is the finished card. I hope you try making this card. The product and written instructions is at the Cut at Home blog. The products we featured today was the Spellbinders Water Lilies Decorative Accent Dyes, the Spellbinders A2 Matting Basics, and Sizzix Tim Holtz Holiday Greens, and then the Hero Arts Deer. Don't forget to subscribe to Cut at Home and to Paper Finesse. Hope you have a great day and have fun crafting.